In this tutorial, we are going to show how to use the Super Decision software to create a simple HP decision model for selecting the best of three cars. The alternatives are pairwise compared against the criteria, so it is a relative model. We have the goal to buy the best car, the criteria, prestige, price, miles per gallon and comfort, and the three alternatives, Acura, Toyota Camry and Honda Civic. The goal is connected to all the criteria and each criteria is connected to all the sub-criteria. We also have the profile for each of these cars, so we have basic information related to the criteria, criteria that we have set up. For example, we have the cost, the miles per gallon, what is their prestige and comfort. The first step to create the decision-making model is to open Super Decisions and start by saving the untitled as the car selection problem. Then we will need to create the clusters. Clusters are the containers for the nodes. I'm going to create the first cluster by clicking the plus button and I will name it Goal. By clicking at more, I can continue creating my clusters. I will need one for the criteria and one for the alternatives. In order to be able to synthesize, we need to have at least one cluster named alternatives or something that contains alternatives. Let's arrange them in a way that we can see all of them. The second step will be to create in each of the clusters one or more nodes to represent our components. So for the goal, I'm going to add a node, goal node. Under the criteria, I'm going to add all the criteria that we just discussed. I keep using the add more in order to create all the nodes at once. You can notice that we are numbering the nodes and the reason is simple. If we number them, then we can set up the order that they will be displayed in the results panels and the super matrix. Otherwise, they will be displayed alphabetically, that it's not always the best way of viewing our alternatives and criteria. And I keep adding nodes, this time for the alternatives cluster, where I'm adding all the alternatives. So I created the first cluster adding using the plus button, but after the first one, I can also use the plus button on the cluster to create a new cluster. I use the add node link in order to start creating nodes in a specific cluster. And if I need, I can minimize the view of the clusters so they look like small icons and maximize them again. I can edit at any point the name of a cluster or a node using the pencil and I can delete a cluster or a node using the trash can icon. The second step will be to create the connections between our uh, nodes from the different clusters. A link from one cluster to another is automatically created if some nodes in a cluster are connected to some nodes in another cluster. Let's click the gold node to select it. Open the Make Show Connections, select as parent node the goal node, and now I'm going to connect the goal node to all the criteria. That would be prestige, price, miles per gallon, and comfort. Be careful when you click the last of the elements that you want on the table, you need to firmly record the last one by clicking on an area outside the table in the same section. Now for the second step of connections, I'm going to connect prestige to all the alternatives. So one, two, three, and I'm going to do the same for all the criteria. I connect each criterion to all the alternatives. An easy way to see whether the connections that I have done are correct is to enable the connection mode. This is the third button on the top row and then 
Select the From node and all the connected nodes will appear with a red border. Yes, we have done it correctly. And we can disable the connection mode again and continue. If you, by mis if you create by mistake a connection from one of your nodes to the same cluster, for example, if you click by mistake prestige and price, you will see a loop. That means that there is an internal connection. To remove a loop, either you remove the connection that you just created or select the cluster and remove self loop by right clicking. Right now, before making any comparisons, we can see the unweighted super matrix and you will see that all the weights are equally distributed. So one divided by the four components that I have in the criteria section gives me 0.25 as a weight for everything. And the same goes for the alternatives with weights 0.33 for each of them. Now, the next step would be to make the actual judgments. To do so, we have to move to the judgment section in case that the information panel is not hidden, it would be a good idea to hide it so we have more space to work. We are going to select the nodes and the from node. We want to start with the goal node, comparing it with the nodes that are in the criteria. Right now, we just have three clusters, so it's pretty obvious the way that we go through. But when we have a more complex model, we will choose also the cluster that we need. There are five different modes of entering judgment. In the questionnaire mode, you select every time the color of button that you want, that is the scale 1 through 9, in order to show which one is the preferred or the more important. For example, comparisons with respect to gold node in criteria cluster, is prestige more important than price? If yes, then I will click one of the left side buttons, while if price is more important, I will click a number on the right side that has the red color. The other ways that we can enter judgments, and judgments are automatically saved, so you don't need to save every time, would be a graphical way where we choose which of the components we are entering values for, and then we move our graph in order to decide the values. Verbal, where we will drag and drop to find out the, the preference that we have, and then we choose the next box in order to set the values. The direct entry, where we can put the tangibles when we have them, or we can set up directly values. A very important part is the invert button in case that we are, we are handling a criterion like cost, where you want to invert the values so you have highest the highest priority is given to the one that has the lowest cost. And the matrix view, where you have the actual numbers that go to the super matrix. Again, you see the cells that correspond to the upper triangular of the matrix, and we have already removed the uh, columns that don't have any connections. Let's go back to our questionnaire mode. And let's decide about the values that we want to enter, for example. So, prestige versus pride, which one is more important? I think that the more important word is not the best one to describe these relationships, so I click on the phrase and I change it to preferable. Save and close, and now we see something that makes a little bit more sense. So, prestige or price? Let's say that price is more preferable. Prestige versus miles per gallon miles per gallon again. Prestige versus comfort. Yeah, a little bit better the comfort. As you see, the moment that I enter a judgment, the results get updated. Now, for price versus miles per gallon, since I'm price sensitive, I'm going to give to price some priority. Price versus comfort. Again, a little bit more important the price. Miles per gallon versus miles per gallon versus comfort. Let's put that comfort is a little bit more important than miles per gallon. At this point, I can check the inconsistency that I see that is slightly above 10%. So in order to fix it, I'm going to the matrix mode, select inconsistency report to see which of the entries 
is the most inconsistent, prestige versus price. Right now we have prestige with four, while the best value would be 15. And the same goes with prestige and miles per gallon. We have a value of four, while it should be around one. When we see the inconsistency report, we decide which of the entries that are suggested could be changed without really bothering us. So prestige versus prestige versus miles per gallon should be a little bit lower as a value. So we are putting a two and the inconsistency now is down to 0 0.07, that is less than 10%. And I can say that I have completed the comparisons and go on with the next set of comparisons. By checking the completed comparison, means that later on, when I have finished my judgments, I can use the computations sanity check in order to find out what I have done and completed and what is still pending. See right now, because I haven't finished entering my judgments, a lot of node comparisons come up as incomplete. Now, after doing the comparison for all the criteria, we will move on to the alternatives and start comparing them based the, on the criteria. Here comes handy the profiles that we have created for our three alternatives. Acura versus Toyota Camry. We know that the prestige of Acura is very good, while Camry is good. So let's say that Acura's prestige is slightly better than Toyota Camry. And that Acura versus Honda Civic, it's even better, while between Toyota Camry and Honda Civic, Obviously, the Toyota Camry is quite better. See, sometimes we check two different values to see the inconsistency when they are very close by, like five would give me an 11%, almost 12 of inconsistency, while four is fine. And I check the, comp the comparison as completed. Move along to all the alternatives in the same way. Moving along to the price, since we have the exact prices, I'm going to use direct judgments. The price that I have for Acura is 35,000. I don't need to use the thousands really. For Camry, 28. And for Honda Civic, I have a price of 20. As you see right now, the preference seems to be Acura that is the most expensive. However, usually we want the least expensive, so I click the invert button, and this way Acura gets the lowest priority, and Honda Civic, that is the least expensive, gets the highest priority. And we can move along with the next one, that is the miles per gallon, which is, again, a criterion that we can use direct values. We are going to use the city miles per gallon that we were given, so 20 for Acura. 22 for Honda Civic and 29 for, be always very careful to register the last value. See, I'm going from one to the other just to make sure that everything has registered. And I see now, obviously the inconsistency is zero since we're not making judgments and they are direct values. We see that this time Honda Civic has the highest priority because it has the highest mileage per one gallon, which is right, so we don't need to invert anything. And we can go on with our last set of judgments where we are going to use the questionnaires. And we know that Acura has an excellent comfort while Toyota's comfort is good and Honda Civic comfort is medium to low. So Acura versus Toyota Camry, let's say that it is an eight, or even better, a six. Acura versus Honda Civic would be an eight, and Toyota Camry versus Honda Civic could be a three. At this point, we can save our model since we have finished the first part of entering the judgments. And first of all, let's see our unweighted super matrix, that is the set of judgments that we just entered. We see the priorities under each of the criteria that we have just set up, and we also see the priorities of the criteria. Actually, if we go to the judgments tab, don't forget to hide the information panel, and let's 
pop up our unweighted super matrix. For example, under comfort, you will see that the vector that was created from the priorities it has been copied in the super matrix as it is. And the same goes for the goal node. The exact priorities uh, have been copied in our super matrix in order to be able to do the calculation. If you go to the computation, synthesize, we can see the final results that so show that Accurate EL is the best option, followed by Honda Civic R last Toyota Camry, and we see the ideal values that set clearly apart Acura, while the normalized values with 44%, 26, and 30 show the same ranking in a different way. We can also see the results by going to the limit matrix, graphical view, where you will see the final priorities of the three alternatives under the goal node, along with the priorities of the criteria that we have already calculated. You see here that the values that are displayed are the row values and they are not normalized by the cluster. So if I open again the synthesize, the row values are the same values that you can find in the limit super matrix. We sum them up and divide each entry by the sum in order to calculate the normalized column, and we divide by the largest value all of them in order to find the idealized column. This way, we created a simple HP model with three levels, the goal, the criteria, and the alternatives. We connected the goal to all the criteria and each criteria to all the alternatives. We entered the judgments for all the connected parts, and we calculated the results, the priorities, by using the synthesized command.